Hi guys and welcome to Fandom Newbie. My name is Shruti and today I'm going to be doing one of my most anticipated videos of the year which is my top 10 books of 2020. I am so excited to be making this video because like honestly I have read some amazing books this year. Like seriously so many of them have been absolute 5 star reads and this list was kind of difficult to make because of that but I had a great time putting this list together so yeah without further ado let's just get started. At number 10 we have The Testaments by Margaret Atwood which is a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale which is one of the best dystopian fiction books I have ever read. So The Handmaid's Tale is set in a fictional world called Gilead which is kind of like um, a dystopian United States of America. So the government in the US has kind of fallen and it is taken over by this extremely morphed religious like really totalitarian kind of government which has completely suppressed the rights of women. So women are not allowed to read, they're not allowed to hold jobs and there's a certain class of women in Gilead known as handmaids. Now this class of women basically their only job is to bear children for certain like privileged noblemen that belong to this government. Now The Handmaid's Tale kind of leaves off at like a cliffhanger where we don't really know what happens and The Testaments doesn't really pick up from where The Handmaid's Tale left off but it continues the story of Gilead and it continues the story of women in Gilead and it um, basically tells the story of how Gilead falls essentially. So it's just really really interesting to read like I I really like after reading The Handmaid's Tale I really wanted to know more about the world of Gilead I wanted to know more about how it came together how it fell and all of that and the testaments kind of offers answers to those questions so so for me it was an extremely extremely interesting read and Margaret Atwood is just an amazing storyteller so yeah that's why it's on my top 10. <laughs> At number 9 we have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This book basically tells the story of a young teenage girl named Xiomara and she is Dominican American. Now Xiomara is not like your typical uh, petite pretty young girl you know she's curvy, she's vivacious, she's loud and she doesn't agree a lot with her mother who is an extremely religious woman. So Siumara has a lot of like opposing beliefs and she's just like at a stage in her life where she's questioning everything. She's questioning religion, she's also discovering her sexuality and she's growing up basically and she's in those really like teenage angsty years. Now that might seem like a story that a lot of authors and a lot of like movie directors have told but what makes this particular book so powerful is that it is written in the form of poems and each poem is so heartfelt and each poem has so much emotion and like you know if Siomara is happy it's filled with so much happiness if Siomara is hurt it's filled with so much pain and each poem is just so beautifully crafted and it really captures Siomara's um her emotions so well that like this book really really moved me and in some cases it made me feel very inspired in some cases it made me feel very angry and I just it was a very very powerful reading experience. At number 8 we have 1984 by George Orwell. Now I've spoken about this book quite a few times on my channel. I feel like this book is one which is like kind of like a life-changing book. This book is also set in like a futuristic world where the entire world or at least Europe and like North America is ruled by a totalitarian government that controls everything even what you think. What I really liked about this book is that it really makes you think how terrifying politics can get especially when you stop thinking for yourself and you follow kind of like a herd mentality about how like you know the government can kind of brainwash you into thinking certain things when you stop questioning things that they are doing which is what happens probably in a totalitarian government so I really like that this book made me think about all of that and it was just a very like thought-provoking kind of read. 
At number seven, we have Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Now, this is basically the story of Art Spiegelman's parents who uh, were Jewish and their entire struggles and their journey through Nazi Germany. So because they were Jewish, Art Spiegelman's parents basically went through it all. Um, they went through the Jewish ghettos, they went through like hiding from the Nazis and they also went through concentration camps, especially Auschwitz, which was one of the deadliest camps in that, in that time. What I really liked about this book was that really the story um, encapsulated like the resilience, the endurance, the bravery, courage and just the love between the two main characters who were Art Spiegelman's mom and dad. It's very simple because it's like written the way we speak because it's basically a graphic novel, right? So it has like speech bubbles and things like that. So it's written the way we would talk so it's very easy to read but the story itself is very very like is very powerful and it really talks about endurance and bravery and love and it's just it was just a very very amazing read at number six we have atomic habits by james clear now this is one of the very few non-fiction books that I've read this year. Um, like if you followed me on my channel for a while, you know that I struggle reading non-fiction books, but this book absolutely blew my mind. So what this book is about is basically it tells you what you need to do to develop good habits and then keep those good habits and not fall back into your cycle of bad habits. Now, generally developing good habits and keeping them is something that's uh, difficult to do, especially like for me, I struggle with that. But this book offered such simple and such practical tips that, you know, I've already started implementing a few of them in my life and it's just made it so easy to develop habits. Like one of the tips that he provides in this book is how to develop ecosystems within your life to help you succeed with your habits. And just implementing that itself has been like enough for me to you know like sustain my habits and make them like something that I do every single day so like really his book is just so practical and it's so simple and it's also very simply written so it's very easy to read so yeah like if you want a book that, that can change your life I highly highly recommend this one at number five, we have The Villain's Duology by V.E. Schwab. So the two books in this duology are Vicious and Vengeful. Now, what these books are about is that there are two friends, Eli and Victor, who are just like absolute geniuses. And they are in college together and they're also college roommates. Now, Vila... Eli. Now Eli and Victor are basically like doing their college thesis but they're trying to find out what it takes to create um, EOs which are extraordinary people uh, which is basically just the term in this book for superheroes like people who have superpowers and Eli and Victor actually find a way to create EOs but in doing that something goes drastically wrong and basically Eli and Victor go from being like the best of friends to mortal enemies who want to kill each other. Again, this book is just filled with so much adventure, so much darkness and like such amazing characters. The thing that I love about this book is that every single character in this book is grey. Like there is no good character or bad character. Just everyone is in this like spectrum of grey morality and it makes this book so much fun to read and just so much more interesting to read. And it's just extremely fast paced, filled with a lot of adventure, filled with a lot of darkness and it is just amazing like I love these books to bits and if you're a superhero fan check this out because you will love it. At number four I have A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Hosseini. This book completely shattered me and tore my heart to pieces. I've done an entire reading vlog on this book so you can check it out over here. Just click over here to check it out and watch me like cry my eyes out and be extremely emotional <laughs> throughout this um, throughout reading this book because this book was just an emotional roller coaster. Like I I don't even know where to start. This book basically follows the journey of two women um, set in Afghanistan. So the two women are Mariam and Laila. And it follows like the journey of both these women from when they are kids to when they are adults. And basically like their life circumstances as well as the political 
turmoil that happens in Afghanistan kind of leads the lives of these two women to intersect and meet and just how they basically um, how they fight and how they in uh, just basically how they fight and their resilience through all the atrocities and all the political like craziness that happens in Afghanistan and it is just so emotional and so heartbreaking and just so gut-wrenching and just so beautifully written like oh my god this book this book really really made me cry so much and it just it has my heart both these characters have my heart and um i still like i still can't think about them without getting emotional so yeah this is an amazing book it's one of my favorite books of all time and if you haven't read it i highly highly recommend it at number three i have daisy jones and the six by taylor jenkins reed now this book also was one of those books that i read like kind of in the beginning of the year especially i think it was during lockdown that i read this book and this book just i remember after reading it it just stayed with me like i couldn't stop thinking about it for almost like a week after i read it because again the characters in this book were just so beautifully written and just so so well developed like i just couldn't stop thinking about them so this book is basically the story of a fictional band named daisy jones and the six uh, that is set in the 70s and it basically follows the journey of how this band comes together how they create an extremely amazing album and then why this band kind of breaks up now the way the story is told is through the form of interviews so i actually uh, listened to this book book on audiobook and the great thing about the audiobook is that every single character which is there in the book has it has like had its own voice actor in the audiobook so it just made the whole reading experience amazing because it i felt like i was listening to a documentary of this fictional band and there were times when it was really hard for me to kind of not think that this band is real because the voice actors were so amazing and the way this book is written is so 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 realistic that it actually feels like you're listening to the story of a real true band and yeah like i couldn't stop thinking about this band i could i wanted to listen to the music created by this band i wanted to see the band members and yeah it was just such a very different and amazing reading experience and it was just it was brilliant so definitely check out this book and check out the audio book because it is such it like really elevates the reading experience to another level all right we're down to our last two so at number two i have the devabad trilogy by s a chakraborty now this book is a middle eastern inspired fantasy series that is set in a magical city capital city called devabad now in this world there are a bunch of middle eastern inspired mythological creatures like there are jinns there are ifrits there are various other like mythological characters throughout this um, book series but what makes this book series so amazing is the political intrigue so the like imagine this book series to be kind of like a game of thrones but based in a middle eastern world which is filled with genies so the political intrigue was what really really drew me in in this um into the series because there's just so much like politics and backstabbing and like plotting happening between the different jinn families and like who's going to sit on the throne who is going to overthrow the king like there's just so much of that going on that this book really just sucked me into its world and it makes you want to find out what happens next so it was just such a wild ride and so 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 beautifully written this entire book series is available on storytel so if you subscribe to storytel then you can listen to all three books on there for free so definitely definitely check this out because it is such an amazing politically rich series that you will fall in love with so and my number one book actually it's a book series but my number one book slash book series that i read this year in 2020 has to be the six of crows duology by lee bardugo this book just absolutely blew my mind and i i love it i love both of them they are just 
such beautifully written books such amazing characters and i did not want to finish reading these books because like they're so good and they're so amazing and each character is just so wonderful and I love these books. I love these books so much. They are just so 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 good. So I'm pretty sure you've heard me talk about these books um, before because I think I have gushed about these books in one video. And basically, the Six of Crows duology has two books: Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, and it is set in the Grisha verse, which is the same world as the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Now, this story takes place in a kind of like fictional fantasy. Uh, city called Ketterdam which is kind of like the fantasy version of Venice so exactly like Venice with all the canals and things like that so um, Ketterdam is basically ruled by uh, a bunch of mobs and gangs and gangsters and our six main characters in this book series they are basically gangsters and thieves and like gang members so they're extremely like again morally grey characters that I absolutely love. What Six of Crows is about is how these characters come together to pull off uh, a really difficult heist and Crooked Kingdom just kind of follows the story after that but what is amazing about these books is how each character is just so beautifully developed and how each character is just like each character you can't help but fall in love with all the characters and there are six of them in this book and all six of them have an amazing story and have an amazing backstory and just like you can't help but fall in love with all of them and they are so amazingly written and so wonderful and I feel like I'm not making any sense right now but this book series is just absolutely amazing and if you're a fantasy nerd, if you like adventure, if you like really really well developed characters that are amazingly written in a fantasy world that is again filled with a lot of political intrigue and a lot of history and a lot of magic then definitely check out this book series because it is absolutely amazing and it blew my mind and I love it and yeah this is also one of my all-time favorite book series ever so yes definitely check out the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo. So yeah that was my video for today I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below letting me know which are some of the top five or ten books that you have read this year let me know down in the comments because i would love to hear what you guys have read and also leave a few recommendations down for me so that i can pick up some amazing books in the new year and of course do subscribe to my channel for more book related videos like these i'll see you guys next time bye